but with these rain strike, there we go. All right, so it's one o'clock in the morning and all the animals are up and I'm about to be feeding all of them. Maybe some other reptiles I'm not gonna feed, but most of the invertebrates I'm gonna feed. I'm gonna feed all the snakes. I'm gonna feed the tegu a little bit and the cockroaches too. All my feeders, everything. So we'll see how it goes and I hope you enjoy the video. If you didn't follow me on Instagram yet, please be sure to. I'll leave it linked in the description and subscribe if you haven't yet. Enjoy the video. Here's my Argentine tegu and I'm going to be feeding him a little tiny bit of ground turkey. He is also going to get other food in addition to this, such as chicken necks. Chicken necks is one of his favorite foods. And I also sometimes make reptile sausages. If you've see it, seen it on my Instagram, uh, you can see that he loves to eat the sausages and he eats them whole. These are definitely one of my favorite animals of all time. I, have, I don't even know why he's not eating all of this right now. He usually goes crazy for them. But with these right now, I'm not dusting them with calcium or multivitamins. And that's because he gets all of that from when he eats his sausages. The sausages are what I use to give him all the calcium he needs. Okay, so here is my jungle carpet python. And I'm going to be feeding her a mouse. Let's see her go for the strike. There we go. Perfect. She's always a great eater. I'm going to feed her a few more of these mice. And the thing about carpet pythons is that a lot of times they only eat mice for people. And then when they're huge, when well not huge, they get about, I guess, I'd say a nine feet max. But when they're about that size, um, people need to feed them a lot. A lot a lot of mice and if you get them hooked on rats it's a lot easier but I'm very thankful to have one that takes rats mice chicks perfectly she's a great eater she's about four feet long she's three years old and we can see Oscar in the back over there uh, but yeah this is a beautiful snake and I love owning her let's move on to the next animal all right, so right here we have Mocha, and she is definitely ready to be fed. I'm going to take the big rat over here, put it in her cage right now, and there she goes for the strike. Perfect. This is her second one. I fed her one. I fed her one, and then this is the second one, and maybe I'll go for a third one. I don't know. I'll see about that. I don't want to overfeed her, but she's about... Eight feet long almost right now. I've had her for over a year. And yeah. She's going to get a lot bigger. We're going to have to move on to feeding rabbits and other big prey items in the future. As soon as she gets big. And one thing you want to be sure about when you're buying reticulated pythons and other big snakes. Is that you have access to food sources. Because not everyone can get frozen rodents as easy as I can or even have the space requirements for these big animals I mean it's really crazy so now we'll move on to the next snake which is a Kenyan sand boa a lot smaller than this snake right here which actually happens to be the longest snake in the world all right so we'll move on right now here is my Kenyan sand boa's cage I took all the water bowls and decorations out so let me just run my hand through here. Oh, I feel something over here. Let's see what it is. There she is. And she's actually a bigger. Oh, look, she's still shedding over here. Oh, a little bit cranky. Maybe. She's still shedding. I might have to give her some more humidity. All right. Oops. Just dropped her a little bit. So. I'm not sure if she's going to eat, but we should still try. Now, I got my tweezers. I should have gotten in my smaller tweezers, but this will have to do for now. Alright, so I'm going to go in. Let's give her this little mouse. She smells it. Oh, she struck. And there, she got it. 
she's on the tongs and everything. Alright. Here's my leopard gecko named Oscar. I'm going to be feeding him some crickets. I just dropped one inside of the cage. But here's another one. Let's see if he's hungry. And... No, I think he's a little bit scared. I might just have to let them go inside of his cage. He usually, he gets crickets, super worms, dubia roaches, and everything is gut loaded, so he's always getting the best. And I'm not covering them in calcium right now because I'm shooting a video, but usually I will give him everything full of calcium and multivitamins. But right now for the video, I guess he's not having it. My other leopard gecko will have it though, and you'll see that he's going to eat, definitely. Alright, we'll move on to the next gecko. So right here is my other leopard gecko. His name is Tim. Here I've got a cricket. And he's about to eat it. There you go. This is probably the best leopard gecko I could ever ask for. Because he eats everything, everything in sight. And immediately, like right there, he took a little bit of time. But usually on normal days, like, see, he's already going after it. He's crazy. Oh, he didn't even eat it. There you go. If it even looks like a bug, he's going to try to bite it and eat it. Alright, so I'm going to keep on feeding this guy. And I'll spare you, I'll spare you guys the, the time this takes. We'll move on to some other animals. Mocha's about to be finished swallowing that rat. She's still got the tail sticking out of her mouth, but she's about to finish swallowing it. Alright, so for the first tarantula I'm going to be feeding here, I have my H poker bees, which is the golden blue leg baboon. This is my favorite tarantula. Probably in the same spot as... Uh, my Pocatheria Metallica, my Goody Sapphire Ornamental Tarantula, but there. I actually dropped that cricket. I didn't mean to feed it to him so soon, but I guess she was eager to eat. I'm hoping it's a she. If it's a he, then I'm going to have to buy a female. It's going to be expensive, but I can't wait to breed these. As you can see over there to the right, he just molted. Hopefully she just molted. So maybe I'm going to try to put that under the microscope and try and sex him. But let's move on to another tarantula. I have about 30 tarantulas maybe. I had a hundred something. And then I started selling off a bunch of the animals in my collection. And now I'm left with still a lot. But the number is far smaller than it was before. So let's move on to the next one. Here we have one of my Goody Sapphire Ornamental Tarantulas, better known as P. Metallicas. Or to me, they're better known as that. I don't know if the people who are watching this video use scientific names or not, but here I have the cricket. We'll see if she wants to eat. I'm not really sure if she's going to, but let's see. I might just have to leave her in there. Oh, my finger's covering the lens. You know what? I might just leave it in there. Alright, so I'm going to move on to my other P. Metallica. My other one is back there somewhere. Uh, I need you guys to keep in mind that I have not sprayed, misted, or watered down any of these cages before I filmed and that's what I'm gonna do after I film the video oh my gosh she's right there she almost came out of the cage but there you can see her beauty she's probably one of the most beautiful tarantulas I ever owned and I'm actually gonna close this before she comes out because that would be horrible all right so let's move on to the next one all right so this is one of three of my salmon pink bird eater tarantulas. I'm gonna go ahead and feed this one right here. All three of them are great eaters. 
I have one adult female, one that's about five inches long that just molted, so I'm not gonna feed him. And then I have this one, which is my smallest one. I've owned a ton of these spiders, but you can see actually, you can see them in my 2016 April Reptile Room Tour. I had a whole bunch of them, but right now I only have three, and this is the smallest one I have. So we'll move on to my next spider right now. I'm not sure if he's going to come out, but here is my Trinidad Olive Tarantula. Let's drop the cricket in there. Let's see if she reacts. Let's wait a second. Get her. To f oh, she's coming out. There we go. Perfect. Let's zoom in on that. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Alright. Here is one of my Mexican red rum tarantulas. I used to have a ton of these guys, but I just kept one right now. So I'm going to drop the cricket in right now and watch it eat. Oh, there we go. This one definitely needs a cage upgrade. I mean, this is way too small for her right here. I know a lot of you guys in the last video complained about my Togo Starburst baboon tarantula not being inside of an arboreal cage and i wanted to clarify that in that video i just bought a lot of the tarantulas that you saw and most of those happen to be temporary cages so right now everything is moved into pretty good cages the only thing that's not in good cages would be slings like this that I had grow almost exponentially because in one molt their growth was just crazy, so I'm going to have to buy new cages for my slings. But other than that, everything is set. Let's move on to the next one. I don't know if you guys are even going to be able to see this one, but this is my rear horn baboon tarantula. I like to call these unicorn tarantulas because they have a big horn coming out of the middle of their head. So, let's see. I'll drop it in. Oh! Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that, but apparently she was hungry. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Alright, so this is the cage of my blue fang tarantula. I'm going to drop a giant cricket in there. Let's see if she picks it up. This cricket might be too big, but we'll see what happens. I don't even know if she's hungry. Maybe she's in pre-molt. I doubt she's in pre-molt. There's no way she's in pre-molt. Because it hasn't been that long since she molted. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave that one in there. But then I'm going to check on it again later. And then I'll take it out just in case. So let's move on to the next one. Alright, so right here I have my... Choco Golden Knee Tarantula. I'm going to be feeding it this cricket right now. That was a perfect strike. And let's zoom in on that. Perfect. Alright, let's move on to my next tarantula. Alright, so right here I have an orange baboon tarantula. This is one of my orange baboon tarantulas. It's actually my small one. And as you can see, there are remains of cockroaches in here. And a little molt down there. This cage needs to be cleaned, but this spider is crazy. So, you know what? I'm just going to drop it in here. It's not even going to attack because it just waits for its prey. But we'll see what happens. I'll give it a second. If not, then I'll just close it. And you guys will be able to see the next orange baboon tarantula, which is my adult female. But that'll be later on in the video, not quite yet. Alright, I'll go on right now. Here you can see one of my green bottle blue tarantulas. I tried shooting her from a different angle, but the cricket is right there. I dropped it in. But she doesn't seem too hungry right now. Sometimes I'd just leave it in there and then 
she'll go in and pick it up after. But you you guys will probably definitely see my other green bottle blue tarantula eat. And that'll come up shortly after this one. Here is my Vietnamese centipede. This has to be the most dangerous animal in my collection right now. I'm actually going to drop a little pinky mouse in there. And it got it. Right there. Perfect. Nice little strike. Pinky mouse. I've seen a lot of people feed it mice. This is the first time I'm actually feeding a tiny little pinky mouse. It's nothing crazy. But usually it gets adult dubia roaches. And that keeps them healthy and full. But this time I tried to switch it up. Give him a little mouse. If you take a look in this cage, you can see my cobalt blue tarantula. I'm not going to feed her in this video because she's already been fed. And I just don't feel like taking her out again. But at least you guys get to see her here. If you want to see more pictures of her, check out my Instagram. Same thing. Same thing is going to go for this salmon pink bird eater I have over here. She just molted. I don't feel like bothering her anymore. The glass is dirty, so... You kind of hard to see her but I'm not going to be feeding her in this video. This is actually the best shot I can get of my H. maculata Togo Starburst baboon in its cage. It's actually living in this cork bark log and I do have it in an arboreal setup since the last video that a lot of you guys complained about. And it's in there. You can barely see it. So I'm just going to end it right here. Alright, so here's my green bottle blue tarantula. This is the other one I have. It's much bigger than the other one. I hope she doesn't freak out too much and I, I'm able to get a good shot. But I can't have any promises about that. Let me get the cricket right now. Alright, I have the cricket in my hand. And I'm going to drop it in right now. Perfect. And it's about to go crazy. Right there you can see the green blue coloration on its carapace. It's a very beautiful tarantula. And hopefully I'll be able to breed them in the future. Let me see if I can focus this. It's a little bit hard with all the glare that's going around here. Alright, we'll move on to the next spider. Here's another new secret animal I got. I got five of these eastern lubber grasshoppers. This one just molted into maturity and is looking so beautiful. They eat these greens and are amazing animals to own. Hopefully I'll be able to breed them in the future. I don't think my Chilean rosa is going to eat, but we'll see. Oh, it looked like she was about to chase it, but she didn't. This was the first tarantula I ever got. She's about... Maybe around 10 years old, or even more now. Yeah, maybe more than 10. She's beautiful, but uh, she's not really the best eater. Sometimes she does eat good, but not today. All right, we'll move on to the next spider. Right here is my beautiful curly-haired tarantula. I'm going to be feeding her a cricket. This one never misses a meal. She loves eating big dubia roaches. This is a little tiny cricket. It's really small for her. But she loves eating big meals. Look at all these crazy beetles. All oh, these crazy beetles. They're not even breeding in here. I just keep them in here. I got these left over from all the mealworms I buy to feed my other animals. I can't feed my vinegaroon in this video. But I'll show you her cage. She's inside of this... 10 gallon cage she made this burrow over here and she crawled all the way back here in this tube that I made for her and in the back she is just chilling over there with her eggs she laid a huge egg sack and I'm just leaving her down there and not bothering her hopefully I'll have baby soon and if I do I'll let you guys know so we'll move on to the next animal 
All right, so right here is my Fidipus Audax Jumping Spider. I'm going to go ahead and drop in a little Dubia Roach. Let's see if it eats it. There it is. You can see its fangs right there. But it needs to see that it has a roach behind it or else it won't eat. So let's see if I'm going to I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it over here. Let's see. I'm going to try to get it to look over here. If it looks over here, it's going to get it. Okay, okay. It's almost there. It's actually coming up. Oh, no. It's coming out. Okay. I think it sees it. Let's see if it eats it. It might get confused with one of the dead roaches that's still there. Okay, it's about to jump. It's going down and it will get it. There we go. So, the Philippus Audax, Daring Jumping Spider, Bold Jumping Spider. There are many common names for this little spider. But they are actually great eaters, and I would never kill one. A lot of people just see them, step on them, and have no idea that they're such interesting creatures. Alright, so let's move on to the next animal. Right here we can see my adult female orange baboon tarantula. I'm going to be dropping a cricket inside of here, but first I'm going to show you guys her molt. She molted in this corner of the enclosure over here, and I still have to take it out, but she, she is a confirmed female already, so I'm not too worried about it. The web design in this cage is really cool, so I'm just going to drop it in here. And I, no, this one isn't going to come up, so I'm just going to leave the cricket right there. Hopefully, it'll get up and move later into the hide of where my orange baboon tarantula is. And then he's going to eat it, and I'm going to have to take it out. Because you don't want to leave any dead insects in there. Even though in my other OBT cage, I left it. I just couldn't clean some of those cockroach wings. But that's fine. I leave the cockroach wings in there because they just stay dry. They don't get moldy. It probably does still have some type of bacteria. But I'm not too worried personally about cockroach wings here's my Costa Rican zebra tarantula I'm not gonna be feeding her in this video because she already ate but as you could see she's a huge spider and she's in a burrow that she built here's my biggest tarantula right now um, my salmon pig bird eater adult female this creek I'm about to give her is nothing. She needs dubia roaches to fill her up, but she still eats everything I put in her cage. Now we'll move on to another spider. Here's my Costa Rican tiger rump tarantula. I don't think she's going to eat, but we'll see. She might be in pre-molt. This, this one isn't really a good eater. Uh, let's see. Is she gonna eat? No, she just seems annoyed. Uh, let's see if I can take this out. Alright, I'm gonna go to the next tarantula. Alright, so here's my Texas brown tarantula. Many Texas natives might recognize this spider. It molted. Uh, it's been a while since she molted, so it's time to feed. But will it eat? Mmm, doesn't look like it. Here, I'll give it a little poke. Oh, yeah, he got it. All right, let's move on. So here's my flat rock scorpion. She's an adult, gravid, soon to be expecting babies because 
she's been uh, with the babies for two years. Pretty soon, one day, I'm going to come down here to the Red Tower room, and she's going to have a bunch of babies on her back. Flat Rock Scorpions are the world's longest scorpion, as far as I know. And then over here, I have my Emperor Scorpion, which are one of the world's largest scorpions in terms of mass. But this one's a baby. And let's see if I can bring a black light over here. Alright, so it's pretty dark in here, and I'm going to turn on the black light. And as you can see, scorpions glow under ultraviolet light. It's a lot cooler in person, but on the video, you can kind of see it. Over here is the emperor scorpion. Looking good in ultraviolet light. But I have an emperor scorpion. I have a flat rock scorpion. And then I have a... Asian forest scorpion. So those are my three scorpions. I'm not going to be feeding them right now because I already fed them. But I just wanted to show you guys them and give you a little update. Alright, so I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. But I'm not going to feed them right now. This is my fire leg, Mexican fire leg tarantula. She's covered in dirt right now. So she's a little bit ugly, but... Um, this is my male, which is surprisingly bigger than my female. Uh, I'm not going to be feeding them in this video, as I said before, because I, I did already feed them. My Mexican red knee has also been fed, but I'll show you her later on. Over here, real quick, I'll show you the Asian forest scorpion I was talking about earlier. And now we'll take out the Mexican red knee. Right here is my beautiful Mexican red knee. She filled up her water dish with dirt, so now I gotta switch that out. But I've raised this one since she was the size of that leaf. That Those three leaves came in with her and her package, and she was the size of that leaf. And now she's this big, huge, and she's about to get ready to molt again. Her size is amazing, her colors are amazing, and hopefully I'll find her a male in the future. Now, I'll show you some of my millipedes and cockroaches. So here are my Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Most of these are normals, but I have one, two Halloween hissing cockroaches. These are different from the other ones. As you can see, their colors are a little bit different. And... I actually successfully bred the Halloween hissing cockroaches and have the babies separated over here in this little container. There they are. I've got about 30 babies, probably. And they're all eating some carrots and lettuce and stuff like that. But these cockroaches are amazing. I love breeding these and I don't feed hissing cockroaches. I only feed dubias and Turkestian cockroaches. Other than that, Madagascar hissing cockroaches are strictly pets for me. And now I'll show you guys the millipedes. Alright, so here are my millipedes. I have one Texas gold millipede. And then I have a bunch of other um, bumblebee millipedes. And I also have scarlet millipedes in this tank somewhere. They are all breeding successfully. I've got a ton of babies right there. Oh, the bad, the flash just turned off. Hold on. So here are my millipedes. This is my Texas gold millipede. And on top of him is one of my bumblebee millipedes. You can find them in Florida. Originally from Jamaica. As far as I know, they're invasive. There are also some scarlet millipedes in here. And they are living on a premium substrate that I created myself. And are breeding perfectly. Let's see if we could spot some babies. Those right there might be some babies. Yep, those are baby bumblebee millipedes. 
you can barely see them because they're so tiny. It's those little white things right there. Look, you can see his eye. This tiny little eye, and they're right there walking. There's two of them, brothers. And that's what they look like when they're adults. And they take about two years to mature to that color. Over here, we can see one that's not so old next to one that's a little bit older. Their colors don't come in yet until a few... It takes a while. So, put some lettuce in there. I'm going to have to replace this because it's getting old. Right there, that's getting old too. But I don't really worry about all this because they eat the substrate. The substrate is completely organic. And they chew it down, chew it down, chew it down. And then you have to go and replace it every so often. So that probably sums it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more, subscribe. I'm going to be uploading a lot more. And if you have any video suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.